What's going on guys, John Elder here from Konami.com and in this video, we're going to look at uploading images for our blog with Django and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at uploading images for our blog. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership, that's all my courses, videos, and books, for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so a few videos ago we added this sort of uh, rich text editor, and this allows us to put images in our blog posts, but we have to reference them from some other website, right? We're just we're just pointing a URL at some other image. We're not actually uploading it to our blog. And in this video, that's what we wanna do. We wanna add a little functionality that allows us to upload an image. Now, we're gonna start out very basic. We're just gonna upload one image per blog post, just like a header image for a blog post, and that's it. And that's all we're gonna look at in this video. But that will set up sort of the mechanism for uploading video, or uploading images, and show you how to do it. So let's head over to our code and let's head over to our models.py file in our the blog directory. So that's gonna be right here. And what we wanna do is come down to our post model and add a field that will hold the images, or at least hold the location of the image. And I'll talk about what I mean by that in just a minute. So let's just come under here and let's just call this header image. And this is gonna be models.image field. The I and the F in image are capitalized. You know, in the past we've been working with car fields, date fields, many to many fields, rich text fields. This is an image field. Obviously it's for images, so we call it image field. Makes sense. Now we wanna make sure, like some of our blog posts don't have images, and that's okay. Maybe we wanna not have an image in a particular blog post, and that's okay too. So we have to sort of designate that. So let's go null equals true. And let's go blank equals true. And now this will allow us to, you know, not have an image if we don't want one, right? Or if we do want one, we can still have one. So now we need to designate where we want these images to be held. Like, where do we want to put them, right? You would think we would put them in a database, but in sort of modern database design, we don't often put images in databases. You can. Uh, some web hosting companies like Heroku won't even let you put images in your database. You can do it, and then like at the end of the day, they'll delete all the images that you added to the database because you just don't want to do that. And, and these days, you usually host your images on some place like Amazon AWS or some other CDN content delivery network. So you're not really ever going to want to hold database or images in a database. What we will do is put the location of the image in the database that we can reference, but not the image itself. And that'll become clear in just a minute. But for now, we're not gonna be using Amazon, AWS, or anything like that. We're just gonna store these in some directory in our app over here, right? So what directory? Well, we need to designate that. We can go upload underscore two, set that equal to, and let's just say this is images. Make sure you have the trailing space there. Now, we don't have a directory called images. This will get created automatically. And uh, I'll talk more about that in just a second. So let's go ahead and save this and let's head back over to our terminal. Now this is a major change to our model, so we have to run a migration. Now we're gonna probably get an error here when we do this. So let's take a look at this. So let's go Python manage.py make migrations. And we've done this a bunch of times in the past. And you can see we get an error and it's saying, hey, you can't use the image field without pillow. Now, Pillow is a, an image library uh, that kind of with, for Python. Pillow stands for Python Image Library. Uh, P-I-L was the original one, but they've now updated it and renamed it Pillow, just to be cute, I guess. Uh, so we need to install Pillow. So let's do that right now. Let's go pip install Pillow, and it's capital P-I-L-L-O-W. And if you read through this image, you'll, it'll tell you, you know, hey, pip install Pillow, right? So... So often, image, uh, so often error messages tell you exactly what to do if you just actually read them. People just don't bother to read them. So let's go ahead and pip install this. It's collecting, bum, 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 and it's done. So we can clear the screen now. And now we can run that command again, python manage.py make migrations. This will make a migration. It's added this little field thing. And now we need to push that migration. So python manage.py migrate. And that will push the migration and we're good to go. So. Let's now go python manage.py run server 
to run our server again. Now, we need to make a quick change to our form that makes the blog post. So head over to our templates directory and look at our add post. So here is the actual form that we fill out. And it's got this form as P thing. But up here, we've got our form method post. We need to be able to tell our form, hey, it's okay to accept images. And images are a different type of data, right? And they have different encoding. So we have to allow for that sort of encoding in our form. So all we have to do is in our form post after, after a method here, we could just go ENC for encoding type equals, now this is gonna be multi part slash form dash data. So let me tab this over so this is all on one line so you can read it. Multi part slash form dash data, right? So, okay, so this will allow our form to sort of accept, accept images. Let's go ahead and save this. Now let's just for fun head back over here and hit reload and nothing has changed on here because we have to actually add a thing to our form itself, right? So let's head back over to our code and let's find that form. So our forms.py file, here's our post form and we have different fields, right? Title, title tag, author, all these things. Well, our models.py, we created this header image. So let's copy this and bring it over here and make sure we're in our post form and just add this field wherever we want it. I'm just gonna put it at the end. So if we save this, now if we head back over here and hit reload, boom, we have this little header image thing down here and we can click browse and a little thing will pop up and we can pick the image we're not gonna do that just yet, but we're coming right along. So now we need a mechanism to store these images and we need to tell our app, hey, you need to store these images somewhere and uh, exactly how to do it. Now Django comes with something that takes care of this for us. Now, we haven't really talked about static files in this video series, but if you look at any of my other Django courses or playlists, uh, we almost always talk about static files and static files are CSS, uh, images and JavaScript. And you usually create a static directory, make a quick change to your settings.py file, and then you put all those types of files in that directory. Well, we need to do the same thing now, but for something called media. Django thinks of images as media that we're gonna be uploading. So there's a specific media folder that needs to be created, and we need to do that now. So let's go ahead and head back over to our code. And we want to go to our settings.py file. This is the original settings.py file way back when we first created this app. I think we called our directory a blog. And inside of here, we see this settings.py. And we haven't really done much in here. We come down here and we see here's a static URL. So we need also now a media URL. So let's go media underscore URL. And we want to point this to media. Now this directory will be created manual or automatically when we upload our first image, right? So we also need to create a media root. So let's go media underscore root, and that's gonna equal os.path.join, and then base base underscore dir, and then media. So this just tells us, hey, how to create the URL path of our media stuff and where to put it. We wanna put it in our base directory, which is defined way up here at the top somewhere, yeah, right here. This just allows uh, URLs to work system independent, whether you're on Windows, Mac, Linux, or whatever, this takes care of the paths for your files and stuff. So, okay, now while we're here, we might as well flesh out the static folder as well. So this is what we always do with static files. We create a static, files underscore dirs equals, and then inside of here, we can go os.path.join, and then base dir, and then static. Now, strictly speaking, oh, we also need a comma at the end of this one. And these two things, media root and static dirs, they're very similar looking. This is just inside of a, tu a tuple, and this is not for reasons we don't really care about right now. So we're probably not gonna be using static files if ever, but if we do, we're set up now. <laughs> we can uh, we can use static files in a static folder. We'd have to create a static folder to do that. But uh, anyway, we're getting off topic. Media is what we wanna look at. So let's go ahead and save this file. Now there's one more change we need to make. 
we need to go to our original urls.py file. And this is the one in a blog, right? This is the one that gets set up automatically when Django creates our project. Remember, we, we, uh, we added include and uh, set the URLs to our the blog URLs. And then we haven't really done much with this. We did some member stuff also. But we, we need to make a couple of changes here. So first, we need to import a couple of things. So let's go from django.conf, C-O-N-F. We need to import that settings file. And then from Django dot conf dot urls dot static. Ah, ridiculous, we need to import static as well. And then down here, we need to make a really weird change to our URLs. We need to come to the closing bracket here and put a plus sign. I know this is really weird, but uh, you likely have not seen this before, but this is the way to do it. So we go static and then settings dot media underscore URL, that's that media URL we just set up in our settings.py file. And then we want to go document underscore root equals settings dot media underscore root, right? So little plus sign, static, and then settings dot media URL, and the document root is settings whoops, dot media root. And these are the, just the things we just set up in our settings.py file. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this. And I believe that is pretty much all that needs to be done. And we still need to account to, for how we wanna output the image once we upload it and how we wanna use it on our blog, but we'll do that in just a second. So let's head back over to our website and let's, well, let's just start over, come to add post and let's go uh, image test. And let's go image test again. We want to put this in coding. This is an image upload test, all right? And snippet uh, image test one. Oh, so here's the moment of truth. Let's click this browse button, pick an image. I've got uh, just a picture of my dogs on the couch. So you can see now it appears right here. And let's click post and okay. Now, we're not quite sure if that worked or not. One way you could find out is to go to your admin panel. Let's just do that real quick. I'm logged in as admin already. And you come down to posts, and here's our image test. And, uh-oh, does not look like anything was created. Messed up something. Let's head back over to our code, and let's look at our the blog directory and our add posts. Ah, I misspelled. We want multi-part dash form data, doy. <laughs> All right, so let's save this. This will actually allow us to upload the images. Okay, so that should do the trick. Let's head back over here and let's go back and let's delete this and try it again. So add post, let's call this image test two, image test two. This is an image test dot two, 2.0, <laughs> uh, image two. And we come down here again, click browse. Let's find an image. There's a picture of the dogs and let's post this. Now, when we come back here and hit reload, let's check this out. And now we see there's this images right there. So there was a file that got uploaded. Now we can head back over to our code and confirm this by, you see now we have this media folder that just appeared. Inside it, there's an images folder. Why an images folder? Because in our models.py file, remember, uh, where'd we go? We, we set the upload to images. This images directory will be in this media directory. And then so we see we've got dogs. We click on it, there's the picture. So very cool. Now, one more thing we need to do because if we head back over here and click on this, it doesn't show up on the actual blog thing because we haven't told it to. So we need to do that. So let's head back over to our code and let's look at the, let's see, uh, da, 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 the blog directory templates and it's gonna be in article details.html. This is the file that puts the blog post on the page, right? So let's just come down here and find the post body. And here it is. And maybe right on top of this, 
since this is an image header, we want it listed first in the blog. So we could just, well, let's do it two ways. I'll show you what, what this output. So if we go post dot, and let's head back to our models.py file, and you need to know what you called this thing. So we called this header image. So I'm just gonna copy this and post dot header image. Now we're not posting the image itself. We want the location of the image, the URL of the image. So we put dot URL. So let's save this and I'm gonna put a couple of line breaks just for good measure. Let's go ahead and save this, head back over here and just see what this is. We're not done yet. I just wanna show you what this will output. This will output the URL where this thing is sitting, right? So now we can take that and make it into an image tag and it will output the image. So let's just do that real quick. And to do that, all we have to do, uh, let's put this on a separate line, is go IMG SRC equals, and then wrap this whole thing in quotation marks and then close the tag. This is just a basic image tag, basic HTML image tag, right? An image source. The source is that URL right there. So now if we go ahead and save this, head back over to our blog, hit reload, boom, there's our picture. If we can right click on this and view the image if we want to see exactly where it's sitting. It's sitting at localhost slash media slash images slash dogs2.png because that's the name of it. And uh, boom, we're done. That's how you upload images. So pretty simple. Once you get the settings.py file fixed, uh, you know, add those media URLs and the media URL root and all that stuff that we did, um, you only have to do that once obviously. Now you can upload all kinds of images any type of images that you want using the same process. You would go to your models.py file, create a record for it to store those specific images and uh, you're good to go. So now one last thing we need to look at is posts that don't have an image, right? We try and click on an old post with no images, we get an error. So let's head back over to our code really quickly and we can just fix this by, with a quick if statement. So. We've got here our image URL. Let's create a quick if statement. Let's go if post.header underscore image. So if there is an image, put it on the screen. Otherwise, we can just end if and not do anything. So go ahead and save this, head back over here. Now we click on some other post, it works fine. If we come into our image test two, it works fine and we're good to go. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and we are moving right along. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to that channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 45 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and we'll see you in the next video.